Hey, what's up guys? Carl Pierre here. And in this video, we're in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the hometown of the legendary entrepreneur, Max Maxwell. You may know Max as a master of wholesale real estate, but let me tell you this, he's so much more than that. I had the opportunity to spend a day with him and I was blown away by his creativity and entrepreneurial spirit. We brainstormed business ideas, fine-tuned social media strategies, and even had the opportunity to catch a Charlotte Hornets game from courtside seats. But what impressed me the most was how Max has built a life that allows him to live on his own terms and on a global scale. From his home studio where he creates content that reaches millions of people to the way that he structures his businesses for maximum impact, Max is the real deal. So if you're an entrepreneur looking for inspiration and practical advice, buckle up because this is gonna be an amazing ride. To kick the day off, I met up with Max's producer and we went to Max's house to start filming. My first impression was that it was gonna be a busy day because he already had a team that was installing the final portions of his smart home. So they were already filming that activity for his channel. Now walking into Max's house, you know, if you haven't seen it already, he took the time to build the house that he felt was his dream house in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and he built it for maximum efficiency. The first thing that we did was really just get kind of warmed up and acclimated, right? Because we were gonna be doing a lot of filming that day. So it was good and important to establish rapport. So I got to meet one of his attorneys and his personal chef, Ice. Shout out to Ice. Ice is a character in his own self. And we got to get to know each other a little bit before kind of diving into the social media strategy and starting to film the podcast. What really stood out to me was how charismatic Max is in person. And it actually showed me something that I've been studying when it comes to kind of presenting information. Max talks in huge gestures and uses a lot of facial expressions. I don't know if you noticed that in his content, but I found it to be rather interesting because it helps to hook people into the conversation. I'm a student of life, so I like to study what's going on around me. And what I was trying to pay attention to was how does Max kind of work filming into his normal routine? And the thing that impressed me the most was that he built a studio right into the back of his property. Now I've been talking with my team here in Columbia that I've wanted to build my own building here that actually I could live in, have my offices in, and in the lower levels have my own studio. So to walk into the back and see that he had this pretty much like a hangar built in, in the back of his home, I was like, this guy is thinking in the same sort of way that I think. The primary purpose for this trip was that I wanted to walk away with getting some more information about two things in particular. I wanted to know how I should approach kind of rebranding myself from a social media standpoint and how to build out on my overall content strategy. So the first thing that we dove into from a consulting standpoint was what he thought about our channel and what he thinks I should be doing differently now that the algorithms have changed up a bit. Ultimately, I've been thinking about moving away from the ENTP Life brand and just becoming a personal brand. Why is that? Because a lot of people don't know what ENTP Life stands for, and his producer was one of them. He was actually thinking that it was the entrepreneur's life or the nod to my Myers-Briggs personality type. So he confirmed that I should be moving away from the ENTP Life brand and moving to a more kind of holistic brand about myself. That way I could talk about whatever I want, whenever I want, and it'd be clear that I'm the man behind everything that I'm doing. One thing that we shared in common was that we both realized that the platforms are monitoring each other. So the strategy of repeating content across social media platforms, like taking the same exact video, posting on Instagram, posting it on TikTok, and posting it on YouTube, it doesn't work because they all are monitoring each other. And they're using that information to determine whether or not you're providing useful and unique content to the platform or just kind of spamming the social world. The platforms don't want that. And he had the same observation. So what he recommended is that we completely customize every bit of content that we share. So if we're making one video, and what you've probably been seeing in this series is that we'll do a trailer and then we'll do unique shorts for each platform in the format that is most acceptable for that platform. So if you guys are building out your social media, I really want you to take that bit of advice and stop doing this kind of like Gary Vee strategy of going from long to short. Mix up the lengths of your videos, but everything has to be unique and interesting. The world has changed. So after talking through this for a few hours, we decided to head back inside and prepare for lunch. So heading back inside, we got introduced to another character. And if you don't know who she is, it's May, and that's, that's Max's wife. May goes by May's Vault on Instagram and TikTok. 
and she has about 3 million followers and her niche is immigration humor. See, the thing is, May is from uh, an Egyptian family. And the funny thing is, is she brought out a cookbook that she did with her mom. She was like, have you had Egyptian food? And I was like, yeah, I used to date this Egyptian girl when I was in college. And she was like, oh really? Why don't you tell me about that? She's She is a funny person. But we got to talk a little bit about the nuances between American life, life overseas, what is life like in Egypt, and some of the things that her audience resonates with, which which is the story of immigration and the story of having parents that are from a completely different culture. We were all getting together to have lunch, and it was really nice to see how this mix of people came together. In Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is not really the most diverse place in the world, but somehow all these people who come from different edges of the planet are together and sharing their experiences. Now I'm building a house in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro to be exact, and I also have properties in Italy that I got on the cheap. And that was one thing that they were actually following me on because they're interested in buying properties in Italy too. So after getting through all of the international talk, we headed back inside to film more content that's going to piggyback off of some of these concepts. Once inside, it was lights, camera, and action. And the funny thing is, Max becomes like really alive when the camera's on. He knows how to turn it on immediately, and he has really good presence and control over the space. We were talking about how to buy cheap homes in Italy, the potential for more people like us, entrepreneurs, people who are high net worth, to move back into these smaller towns, revitalize them, maybe even develop like a think tank where we're taking on new projects together. And I thought that would be a brilliant way to help revitalize communities like Musumeli, Sicily. Now in this conversation, I got to see that the way that Max thinks is a lot like mine. And I think it's pretty much universal in all entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are people who can easily identify problems and solve for those problems. Now, remember when I told you that Max was pretty clever about how he goes about generating income? Well, when he did this whole campaign to do a day with Max, part of that sell was to build this content. So not only did he get paid to create the content that helps him sell other products and services, but he was able to pay for his season tickets by raising capital through his social media. See, I created a program called A Day with Max. So if you want to check out the full podcast, I highly recommend you go to the link down below. We talk for about an hour about general aviation, life overseas, what it's like to build a company, and overall the entrepreneurial experience. Now, if you like this series, please do me a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. This is the sort of content that I want to do more of. And if you like this storytelling format, let me know in the comments section below so I know in what direction I should go in as I start to evolve the channel. Once we wrapped up from filming Max's podcast, it was time to switch the stage and turn it on him. He's going to be a guest on our channel and I'm interviewing him to get more insight into how he thinks as an entrepreneur. What I've noticed lately is that my generation, the millennials and the, and the generation after me, have been complaining a lot about the cost of living in the United States, things being out of touch. And even though I do believe that the cost of living in the United States does not quite match the lifestyle that you, that you get for it, I feel that everybody has the potential to create the life that they want. As an entrepreneur, that's exactly how I live. If I have something in mind, I bring it into reality. So to see my generation and the people after me struggling with this concept of creating the life that is the life of their dreams, I wanted to give another perspective and get somebody else who's an entrepreneur to talk about the same and have him share from his perspective, what are the advantages of living in a small town like Winston-Salem? And how does he see the world changing and moving more to this globalization, this globalized environment? The cool thing about that conversation is that Everything that he's saying is absolutely true. The world has gone pretty much remote. And if you're not participating on a global level, you're for sure going to be left behind. It doesn't make sense to just think that where you are is the world that you live in because the world has changed in a major way pre-COVID and post-COVID. Overall, I was blown away from the experience because I saw how efficient that transition from his podcast to the interview set actually was. I was actually looking behind the scenes to think, how could I recreate the same set right here in Colombia? So I love 
the creative aspect of making content. And I also like to do things my way. So seeing that set really let me know that the direction that I'm thinking about going in is the right one. So it's not over yet. It's about 6.45 in the afternoon and we have to make it down to Charlotte, North Carolina for the basketball game. Now, I can already tell that neither of us were really that interested in going to the game, but it was part of the offer and what was promised. So Max was already like, hey man, do you, do you want to watch the whole game? And I was like, man, I, have, I haven't even watched a basketball game in more than five years. I'm not even interested in going to the game. He was like, you know what, actually, me neither. But we went out to Charlotte anyway, just to, to take it all in. Now going from Max's house to Charlotte is about an hour and a half ride altogether. And I've never sat courtside at a basketball game, so it was a completely new experience. Now the value that I see in sitting courtside is who are you kind of in proximity to? You have other high net worth individuals who are most likely in the position to afford those seats. You have other celebrities. There's a lot of opportunity to meet new people. And if you're a season ticket holder and you have those kind of courtside seats, you get access to bonus areas within the stadium where they're offering drinks and snacks so that it's another lounge that allows you to, again, network with people that probably share some of your interests, right? So the Charlotte Hornet Stadium is located in Uptown Charlotte. And Charlotte, for those of you who don't know, is a really cool city. It's actually the number two banking city on the East Coast after New York. And because of that, a lot of people have been moving down there and the city is a city that is growing. I almost bought real estate there back in 2009 because my brother lives in Winston-Salem as well. And he saw the potential in Charlotte as an expanding city. Unfortunately, I never bought anything down there, but I could see just by driving around town and looking around that things have really changed a lot in the past few years. Max and I didn't stay for the end of the game because neither of us were really that interested in watching the game to begin with. So we wanted to beat the traffic on the way out and get back home because about an hour and a half back up to Winston-Salem. So after 13 hours of spending time one-on-one -on -one with Max, the day came to a close. But what I got away from this experience was worth more than what I put into it. And the reason why I say that is because I learned a lot about how I should position myself and what I should be doing to maximize on my social media. Remember I told you I paid $5,500 for this experience, but he was able to sell that about 11 times over just by sending out one reel. Seeing exactly how efficient his operation was, the team that he's built, really set the framework for what I need to do going forward to maximize on that. It also reaffirmed that the path that I'm on is the right path. I see that I'm making progress, but I'm still not where I wanna be. So being able to kind of get the shortcut or the Cliff Notes version is actually really useful. It eliminates a lot of trial and error and it prepares me for what I need to do next, which is invest in more equipment, invest in more space and take my game up to the next level. So for anybody who's doubting working with influencers or working with people who have a strong social media following, I highly recommend it. Those people didn't get to where they are by being slouches, by any stretch of the imagination. For those of you who are curious about how this all came together, check out this video where it all started.